Uh, hello guys, my name is Tom Antos and in this video I want to talk about the Cinema Zine lenses uh, from Rokinen, which are the, these three up here that I have. Um, and I'm also going to sort of compare them to uh, the other lenses from Rokinen, which are their standard cinema lenses. Um, and the reason why is because a lot of people have been asking me if is it really worth you know spending the extra money uh, you know upgrading let's say from the the standard uh, or the, the more affordable Rokinen uh, cine lenses to the zine lenses and also what is really the difference um, so uh, this is just sort of a, it's going to be a first part of, of a, a multiple part series that i'm going to do about these lenses where i'm going to put them through all kinds of uh, tests in this episode, it's kind of more of an in-studio uh, chart test that I'm going to show you. So I'll show you guys basically how these lenses perform compared to the, uh, the more affordable version. Uh, but first, before I show you guys those tests, I wanted to just sort of explain to you really the difference uh, b between them. Um, now, these lenses, uh, the biggest difference is, I would say, the, the price. Uh, <laughs> these lenses retail right now, uh, one of them uh, costs 2400 $95 so you could say it's a lot of money for one lens now when you compare them to uh, other cinema lenses from Canon or Zeiss or whatever it's actually uh, a very affordable uh, it might be hard to believe but many of those lenses cost you know two or three or even four times as much as these ones now the more affordable lenses that are working on has up here which are also cine lenses uh, those are ones uh, are significantly cheaper uh, this whole set, for example, that I have up here costs $1,700, so it costs you less than one of these lenses. Um, so what is the reason you know, for this big difference in price uh, and sh should you really upgrade? To, you know, is, it, is it worth upgrading basically from these lenses, let's say if you already have them? Um, well, uh, first let me maybe talk about just in general why would you want to get cinema lenses. So let's say if you're shooting on a DSLR right, or a DSLM type of camera, uh, then you're going to be using uh, uh, lenses that are made for that camera, which you know most of those lenses are going to be photography lenses. Uh, now the cinema lenses, uh, like this one for example, uh, the great thing about them is that they've been designed uh, with video production in mind. Uh, what that means is that uh, they have separate actual rings uh, on the on the exterior of the lens that allow you to um, manually pull the aperture, uh, so change the, the aperture, which is actually measured in T-steps uh, when it comes to cinema lenses. Uh, slight difference when it comes to numbers, but it's the same general idea, right? The, the smaller the number, the, the, the bigger the opening. Uh, and the, the, the bigger the number, the smaller the opening in the lens, so you have less of an exposure. Um, and then also you'll have a physical ring for pulling focus. Now another really good thing about the Rokinan uh, Cine lenses, like the one that I have up here, uh, is that the focus ring has been adjusted because they sell the same version of this lens, you could say, but for still photography. And in that uh, version, uh, the focus ring moves, you know, a very small amount. Uh, and that's because for, you know, still photography, you want to be able to quickly hit that focus point uh, and then just take a photo, right? You don't want to have to travel long, long distance. Whereas with cinema lenses, you actually want that distance to be very long because that makes it easier if, for example, you're trying to track an object that, let's say, is coming towards the camera and the focus changes. It makes it a lot easier to, when you have a longer travel on the focus ring and you can really, really get that, you know, that focus exactly, you know, spot on. Um, another thing is that those uh, rings up here for both the aperture and the focus ring uh, they're also geared. They're geared with the standards of a cinema gear, uh, which is a 0 0.9, I believe, uh, pitch ratio. And this will work with, you know, all kinds of accessories, you know, like, you know, wireless follow focus or regular follow focus or aperture, uh, you know, uh, kits and things like that. So this means that if you're working with sort of a cinema setup where maybe let's say you have rails attached and uh, on that, let's say you have follow focus, then uh, you can attach it to it easily and then this way you can control more precisely the focus uh, using a follow focus system. So these lenses are, are actually very good lenses. Um, you know, I've done actually a few videos about them before, uh, but in general, I mean, they're, they're very sharp, beautiful lenses. There's also, also a ton of videos I'm sure you, uh, you can find online about them. Uh, and they come in various focal lengths. Uh, this one happens to be the 50 millimeter. I have the 85, 24, and 14 millimeter up here. Now, uh, one thing you'll notice about these lenses is that uh, they're all slightly different size. Uh, just you know, the length of the lens, uh, but even here, the front diameter of the lens uh, will change depending of on what focal length you have. 
Uh, so that's something to keep in mind because let's say you have a variable, you know, ND filter um, or any kind of filter that you have to sort of thread on uh, onto these lenses. Well, you're going to have to get different step down or step up rings to be able to use those filters. Uh, also, let's say you have a matte box you're putting in front uh, and you want to be able to, you know, actually close the opening so that you don't have any light uh, sort of going in through the back of the matte box and creating reflections. Uh, then you're going to have to have different donuts or different basically rings that, that kind of cover the, the opening there because they are different uh, you know, front diameter. So now with that said, what is the advantage of using the Zine Cinema lenses uh, over the, the regular Rokinan lenses? Uh, well, first thing is you'll notice is actually the fact that the size does not change. So despite the fact that we have three different focal lengths up here, uh, the lenses are exactly the same length and also the front diameter is going to be identical. Not only that, but also the positioning of the aperture ring and the focus ring is going to be uh, the same. So the same distance from the mount and then, you know, between them. Uh, versus, for example, one of these lenses, uh, like I said, the, the distance between these will actually change depending on, uh, on which lens you're using. So uh, that's something to consider. And the reason why I'm saying that is because the, the biggest reason why you want to get lenses like these, uh, which would be what I would consider sort of standard cinema lenses is that you know they work great when you're working with like a standard cinema uh, setup so let's say you have a full you know sort of a blown out uh, cinema camera rig you have uh, rails on it you probably have then a matte box in front so you can put filters uh, obviously also a follow focus uh, probably something to pull you know the aperture remotely those are you know the reasons why you'd want to get lenses uh, like these uh, and the, the, the size or having a sort of a uniform size between all the different focal lengths is a huge time saver and it just makes it, it, makes it easier working with these lenses. And the reason is because, uh, for example, these lenses will fit a standard opening, uh, meaning the front diameter up here is the, the standard sort of industry adapted diameter that all matte boxes or at least the professional matte boxes uh, will have. Meaning that you just literally put this lens up against any of those professional matte boxes and you will not have any light leaking through the back of it. Uh, and that is a huge time saver if, for example, you're on set uh, and you need to change out a lens, but you already have your whole camera set up, you have filters in front, uh, you have the follow focus, all that stuff. Well, with this, you can basically you know, open the matte box, take out the lens, put in the new lens, and you know right away that your, your follow focus, let's say, is perfectly aligned. So it goes perfectly in your gears. And also then you close the matte box and, you know, right there, you're, you're ready to roll again. Uh, you don't have to worry about, you know, any of these other things like you would with the, with the sort of non-standard cinema lenses. Uh, so the size is a big thing. Um, now, does that mean that all the glass elements and everything are, are the same inside? No, because actually, if you look at here, I have the 50 millimeter and here the 20, oh no, this is 85 actually. Uh, if you'd look at inside, you'd actually notice that the two front, uh, basically the diameters of the, of the housing of the lens are uh, the same, but the actual diameter of the glass inside is different, is the different size. The 50 is much, much smaller and also the glass is, you know, element is pushed further back. Uh, another thing about these lenses is that none of them have a threaded front ring. And that's because, you know, these are really big, you know, it's a big diameter and also they're just not meant to have any lenses or filters actually threaded or attached directly to the lens. Because like I said, these are meant to work uh, with cinema uh, standard matte boxes uh, and then you would put the filters in that. Uh, another thing that these lenses have uh, that some of the more, more affordable lenses don't uh, offer is the fact that uh, the focus ring up here as uh, it travels a lot further so it's a much bigger or as you say longer pull so you can get really precise with the, the focusing plus you also have a more detailed marking so you have markings here on this side uh, and also on the other side up here so regardless of you know uh, which side your focus puller is on you can you know pull the focus and he can read the marks uh, clearly also the numbers are just bigger so they're easier to read and you know in a lot of these sort of professional cinema setups you might have your follow focus uh, operator on the right side, let's say, and a camera operator on the left side. So this is uh, definitely uh, you know, very helpful. Uh, also with the T-stops here, the, the markings are also just bigger and again, easier to read. Now, another thing I wanted to let you know is that uh, aside from the physical you know, and exterior basically built of these lenses, 
uh, the quality uh, of these lenses is great but it doesn't really mean that it's you know really different uh, or drastically different from the more affordable version of these lenses i'm gonna let you guys watch the test charts that i shot and uh, make up your own mind uh, with regards to that but uh, i'll let you know that my tests uh, have revealed really to me uh, that these lenses perform the same and i think the reason is because uh you know i, I don't know i can't 100 percent confirm this but looking at the glass elements and then the, the actual size of the glass elements inside and comparing them to the more affordable version of these lenses here uh, it looks like uh, basically like these lenses are the exact same uh, lenses as these ones except they're just been rehoused in these more professional uh, sort of cinema standard size uh, you know lens and lens housing so really i think that's the only difference i would say so uh, that's why I wouldn't be surprised if the quality is really identical because technically you have identical glass in them uh, But again, I'm gonna let you guys watch the, the, the test that I've shot um, You guys can maybe let me know what you think in the comments below uh, And then the last thing maybe I'll, I just wanted to let you know is if you're considering buying maybe these lenses or the more affordable cinema lenses uh, and maybe you're thinking about which mount to buy them uh, with because they do come with various mounts uh, well, I'll just tell you as a, just a general good, basically, advice with any lenses that you buy for video. This is not, this is not going to apply for photography, but for video, uh, for kind of a cinema setup where you don't need out of focus and things like that, I would say always buy lenses uh, that are uh, going to be e e Canon EF mount. Uh, and the reason why I'm saying this uh, is because with these lenses, obviously, you're not going to be using uh, out of focus because like I said, they have, you know, they're all manual focus, by the way, in case you didn't know. Uh, and so you control the focus by the, by the, the front ring up here. Uh, and so because of that, you don't care about all the electronic functions and, and you don't care about whether these lenses are native to your camera. So regardless of what camera you own, if you buy the Canon EF mount, it means that you can adapt these lenses and use it with that camera. And that's great because let's say down the line you might upgrade your camera or you might switch your camera you might be using i don't know canon right now and you might switch sony or might later on jump to uh, panasonic uh, and these lenses will work with all those cameras i use this on you know on, on the sony a7s i've used it on panasonic gh4 which is a micro you know lens i've used it uh, on canon uh, cameras so really like i said it will work and the simple reason is because if you buy a lens with canon ef mount uh, it just simply means that those lenses are going to be the smallest, uh, the, the, the shortest basically when it comes to length. And that's because the Canon EF mount has the biggest flange distance and distance from the, the image plane or the sensor. Um, so that means that the lenses are going to be the smallest. And then that means that they're easier to adapt because the lenses are so short that you can easily put uh, all these adapters that you can buy these days. And like I said, the most affordable adapters, you know, the, the cheap ones that don't transmit any electronic information are going to work with these again because these lenses are fully manual anyways. Um, so again, yeah, if you're asking for my opinion, get the Canon EF mount. But anyways, without uh, any more of my uh, talking here, let me just let you guys watch these uh, tests that I shot. Uh, and, you know, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, and again, let me know what you think of the final test that I did with these lenses uh, down in the comments below. Uh, also, if you haven't, make sure you check out my website at tomatosfilms.com. Uh, subscribe for the newsletter that I have over there. Uh, those guys who actually who did subscribe to my newsletter were able to see these tests that I've shot already a few months ago. Uh, so that's one of the sort of privileges I get to kind of share some of these tests that I do and any kind of filmmaking news and stuff like that via my newsletter. Uh, so make sure you subscribe to that. Uh, and uh, if, otherwise, uh, if you like this video, click thumbs up, share it, and I hope to see you guys uh, next time. Thanks.